Today we're going to go over how you can make your very own Potato Boss style lens. The Potato Lens was created by my fellow creator Phil Walton. If you haven't already, go check out his profile. He posts a ton of cool content on the stories and he makes so many awesome lenses. He has this potato lens, he has a banana, he has a Cheeto, a pickle, the list goes on and on. Now, the cool thing about this lens is as I move my head, you can see that it's not just a singular motion. You can see that the bottom of the potato is lagging. And that is one of the keys I'd say to uh, making these lenses so cool. It's not just a rigid 3D model, there's a little bit of life to it. And so we're gonna go over how you can add that to your own lenses very easily. Now, before we jump into Lens Studio, uh, you will need to make sure you have a 3D object to use for your lens. So here I have a very simple peanut model that I found online. And the only modification I've made is I've added a very simple rig. It's just two bones, uh, nothing complicated. So if you're new to rigging, uh, just look up a tutorial on how to rig in whatever 3D software you're using. Uh, you don't need to know much, obviously. Uh, this is very simple. So just get a couple bones added. And you want your first uh, root bone to be up at the top where the face will be. And then the part that's moving will be the second bone. And once you have all that, go ahead and export your model with the rig. And let's head on over to Lens Studio. Okay, so now we are here in Lens Studio. Um, I just have a blank project and all I've done so far is I've imported my 3D model, um, a few textures for it. I've created a custom material uh, just to get those uh, textures mapping onto the model fine. And then I have a background image uh, for OB behind the 3D model. Now I'm just going to rearrange my window a little bit. I'm going to switch to uh, the snap camera for the preview. And I also want to go horizontal because we want to make sure this works for snap camera. And just so that everything's a little more visible, I'm just going to click and I'll drag that, drop it in here. And there we go. Now we have a better preview. All right. So the first thing we need to do is get our model attached to the user's head. So up in the objects panel, uh, it's very simple. Just add a head binding. Expand that and let's delete the face occluder. We don't need that here. Okay, so once we have that, let's go ahead and add our 3D model to the head binding. And as you can see, I did not have it scaled very well inside my 3D software. So I'm just going to bring that down a bit. And then you can see it doesn't line up exactly with my face. So whatever 3D model you have, just kind of line it up so that matches the face a little better. All right, and now you can see I can move around and we have this 3D model moving around with my head. Now I'm gonna add my material. Uh, you may not need to do this step depending on, on how you had the material set up in your 3D software. And I'll just make sure your blend mode is set to normal. All right, and everything is looking good. Now, before we go further, let's go ahead and add our face. So in the objects panel, I'm going to find the face inset. So this lets us grab parts of the face. So you can see here in the preview, my mouth is now showing up and we can click and drag in this 2D view. So we can move it lower, but you can stick it wherever you want really. Now, as I turn my head, you can see there's kind of this weird sort of parallax going on. Uh, my mouth doesn't seem to quite match up with the 3D model. So if we come back to our 3D scene and we rotate, we can see that the mouth is kind of set back from the edge of the model surface. So I just want to grab that and move it up. Now, as I move my head, you can see the mouth tracks a lot better. All right. So the other thing I want to do is when I added that face inset, it added a new face inset binding. Uh, since I'm tracking the face to this model, um, I'm just going to go ahead and find that parent bone, that first one I added in my rig. I'm just going to drag that face inset under there. Now you shouldn't see any changes here, 
And now I can drag this model anywhere I want and my mouth goes along with it. Not that we need to do that here, but I just like to organize it that way. All right, so let's rename that to mouth and let's duplicate that. We'll call this the left eye. Now over in the face and set properties, I'll select left eye. Now one quirk about Lin Studio is this is actually the user's right eye, if we line it up here, um, but it's on our left hand side. That's just how they name it. So I'm just gonna move it up to where it looks pretty good. Then my 3D scene, it's now sticking out from the model. So I'm just gonna slide that on back so it matches up a little better. And then we just need to duplicate that. Rename this to right eye, change the face region, and we can just slide that on over. And it more or less lines up. It's not quite there. There we go. That's pretty good. Okay. So as we can see in the preview, uh, my eyes and mouth are now on the peanut model, but we still have a little ways to go before uh, this filter is done. So let's go ahead and add the motion to the bottom half of the model. Now, the way we're going to do that is using the smooth follow script. Now, this script is not built into Lin Studio. It is actually provided by the community. So um, I'll have a link in the description, but open up your web browser and we're going to go to github.com slash frozen atlas slash OLC dash repo. Now, this is a collection of projects and scripts and templates uh, from the community. Now, there are a few different contributors. And if you have something you'd like to share, um, feel free to create a GitHub account and um, you can look up how to um, contribute to projects. But if you ever have something useful, feel free to uh, contribute. There's lots of good stuff here. Uh, so back to our task at hand, we want the smooth follow script. So that is in the projects and templates folder. I know that just because I've snooped around here quite a bit. So we're going to come down, we'll find smooth follow. Now we can download the zip file of the entire project and open it up, play around with it ourselves. Uh, or we can just come into the public folder, find the smooth follow.js file. And this is all the code we need. So I'm just going to highlight that. I'll copy it. I'll come back to Lin Studio. I'm going to add a new script. Let's rename that to smooth follow. Let's open that in the built in editor and we'll paste that in and save. All right. So this script, uh, there might be some weird words going on. We have lerp vec three again, transforms world positions. All we really need to worry about though is set up as some input parameters. All right, so taking a look at the script, um, it just wants a target object. That's what we're going to follow. Uh, there's an offset. We don't need to worry about that. And then the smooth speeds will dictate how quickly our object is following the target. So the best way to visualize this is actually with a quick example. Uh, so I'm just going to turn off the peanut model and let's add a sphere. Now I do not want this under the head binding. I'm just going to drag it and I'll keep it under the camera, but now it's not bound to anything. Now coming back to our scene, uh, let's find our sphere. Let's move it up so we can see it. And we'll scale it so we can see it better. All right. So with our sphere selected, let's add a component, add our script, our smooth follow. And for our target, let's choose the head binding. All right, so you can see that the sphere moved. And as I move my head, you can see the sphere follows, but with a lag. So if we look at our script, uh, this weird word lerp, uh, this is taking the position of the script, which is on the sphere. So we'll take the sphere's position. 
the desired position is going to be the position of our target object plus the offset. Uh, so if we wanted the sphere off to the side of my head, we could change the offset. And then the smooth speed is um, going to be kind of the percentage between those two positions. So that's what the lerp does. So it takes the two positions and essentially we tell it what percent of distance we want to choose our new position. So if I change smooth speed to zero, that means we're always going to keep the sphere at its position because we're going 0% of the way between the sphere and our desired head position. If I change that to 1, then it's always going to be tracking to the desired position or the target object. But now if I adjust this value, we get that lag. So the higher the value, the faster I have to move for you to see the lag. The lower the value, the more noticeable that lag in motion is. And so that's the key to getting that um, signature potato boss lens look. So I'll just leave this at, uh, let's put it at point 0.1 for now. That looks like a pretty good lag. It's not too fast, not too slow, but we can always adjust that. All right, so we are interested in the sphere having that lag. We want our model to have that lag. So let's just delete the sphere. It looks like I forgot to delete that face and set binding. Okay, so let's come back to our scene. So we have our main bone in our rig. Oh, might help if we turn that back on. Okay, so if we select our main bone, I don't know why it keeps doing that, and we want to move it, we see that our entire model moves. If we come down to our second bone, which is bone.001, and I move that, you can see just the bottom half of my peanuts model is moving. And that's exactly where I want the motion to be. So with this bone selected, I'll add a component. I'll choose smooth follow. My target will be the head binding. And if I move my head, and I move back and forth, um, there's no motion. Our script isn't working. And that's because this bone is a child already of the head binding. It's not a direct child. It's like a great, great grandchild or something, but it's already been influenced by the position of my head. So with this bone.001 selected or whatever the bone in your model ends up being named, I'm just going to click that and drag it not to the head binding, I just need it outside the head binding. So now, as I move, you can see we get that following motion. Now 0 0.05 is too slow, so let's try 0.1. I think that's still a little too slow, so maybe 0.2. So you can see it's not delaying that much, but as I move my head, there's definitely some motion going on in the bottom half of the model. All right, so we have all that set up. Now the last thing to do is to set up the background uh, because it doesn't look great with just this peanut over my face and nothing else going on. All right, so let's add a screen image. So a screen image is uh, just a 2D image um, well, all images are, are 2D. It's in 2D space with an orthographic camera. So there's no perspective. It's just purely two-dimensional. Now, I do already have an image loaded. So I'll add that. And for my stretch mode, I want that to be fill. So no matter what the dimensions of the scene, it'll always fill it. So if I switch to a phone, it's not distorted. It works good on a mobile device. And then if I come back to horizontal, it also looks fine on desktop. But now the problem is uh, we can't see any of our hard work we just put in. So we need to make sure that the this image is displayed behind our 3D model. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a separate render target. 
So a rendered target is where all the everything that the camera sees, that whole image is constructed onto a rendered target. We come to our scene config, that is what is displayed to um, as the end result of the lens. So in the resources panel, I'm just gonna add a new render target. I'm gonna rename this to background. Now I'm gonna select my orthographic camera. I'm gonna set the render target to the background. Now, in the preview it's disappeared because in our scene config, um, we're outputting the render target, not the background. So it won't really matter too much in this lens, but I'm gonna go ahead and drag that up to the top of the render order because the background should be rendered before the rest of what the camera sees. Um, and now I'm gonna click on the main camera for the scene. I'm gonna change the clear color option to texture so the clear color option is what's coming into the camera. So if it's set to none, it'll just be what the camera sees. Um, I can change it to background. You can see it's just what the camera sees still. I set it to color. Now it's just a blank background. But I can also set it to texture. Now on this input, I can choose that background render target. And now we have our backgrounds showing up. And I can change to any device and you can see that it still works. All right, so that's just about it for our effect, but one last bonus, let's go ahead and add in a second background, which is just a green screen. Uh, so if you're, if someone's using this lens through Snap Camera on Zoom, they can use Zoom's green screen feature to add whatever background they want. Now this is really easy to do. Uh, so all we need to do is we're going to, in the resources panel, Add an unlit material. I'm going to select that. And for the base color, I want my red to be 0, green to stay 255, blue to be 0. So that is just straight up green. I'm going to take this screen image. I'm going to duplicate it. So I'll rename this first one Nuts. And the second one I'll rename green so we can keep things straight. And then the material for the image, I'll change that to that green. All right, so this is all nice, but we wanna be able to switch between the two. Um, so rather than writing a custom script, we can just add a behavior script. Let's look for the helper scripts, find behavior. I'll just add that to the scene. You can stick it wherever. I'll just drag it up to the top for organization purposes. All right, and so let's go and trigger it with the tap, that's fine. Our response type, we want it to be set enabled. Our target, we're going to grab the nuts. And for action, we're going to toggle. And then we're going to click on this little gear, we'll copy, click on the gear again, hit paste. And that will duplicate that behavior script. We'll change that from nuts to green. We'll leave that as toggle. So if we click this, um, we aren't getting our desired result. What we want to do is turn off the green, just have the nuts. And now if we tap, we will toggle the state of nuts. So we start out active. When we click, we deactivate it and we activate green. So now um, it's very easy. By default, we'll have this nut background, but if the user wishes, they can tap or click and they get the green background and then they can use the green screen feature in Zoom or whatever um, video capture software they're using. And we have that nice kind of delayed motion. And that is how you can create your own potato boss style lens.